So who am I? I'm Alexandra Fedorova. I currently work as principal software engineer in Red Hat. I uh, work on uh, continuous integration topics. I, uh, we do CI for RHEL and for Fedora. In Fedora, I'm a member of Fedora Continuous Integration uh, Special Interest Group. I created it and we work on um, the CI implementation automation for testing in Fedora. Uh, we do similar things uh, in uh, RHEL and in, we'll be doing in Centra Stream. I was uh, on the first core of Fedora Engineering Committee uh, last year. I'm currently elected member of Fedora Console. I also have one package I maintain in Fedora. It is called MindTest. It's a game. Uh, for those, if you're a fan of Minecraft, don't listen to the next sentence, but <laughs> uh, MindTest is a open source alternative to Minecraft, which I highly recommend, especially in these antisocial times. Uh, it has support for Android Windows clients and you can play with your friends and family for free and it's better performant than the Minecraft actually. So take a look after this talk. And uh, yeah, I've been Fedora contributor actually for more than 10 years now. And I started as just a member of Russian speaking Fedora community. I was an administrator of Russian Fedora community for some time and I'm still active there. And yeah, I did release parties as Fedora ambassador. We organized events, we organized a uh, translated version of test days and things like that were writing documentation and uh, a lot of things actually. So uh, you can see that over 10 years, I collected a lot of stories and basically I uh, made Fedora community work part of my usual life for so long that uh, I can claim that <laughs> the impact Fedora community had on my career path is in enormous. I actually, uh, you'll see that from the very beginning, Fedora uh, provided me with ways to start this career. And actually, I ended up here doing Fedora work. So it was all the way Fedora. But let's start from the start. Uh, the first uh, story I'm going to tell is how I actually switched to Linux and how I got my first IT job. Uh, so long time ago, not, not long time, but some time ago, <laughs> I was a student of uh, pure mathematics in Moscow State University. I was uh, specializing in geometry and topology and as a student of pure mathematics, you really have no connection to the real world matters, apart from uh, that part where you need to write down all your abstract findings and reasonings on, on a paper and to make it into article and your diploma work, which you need other people to read. And as a student of mathematics, uh, you write uh, articles in LaTeX. Uh, for those who don't know, uh, LaTeX is a special language uh, uh, which is much better suited to describe mathematical formulas and complex uh, mathematical objects than usual uh, word processors. And so uh, at that time we had um, in the student circles, we had this a manual uh, of about five pages long manual how to set up an uh, environment on Windows to work with LaTeX and actually be, be able to edit uh, LaTeX uh, files and provide PDFs out of them. Uh, one part of that manual was about how to set up the LaTeX itself on Windows. The other part was about how to make uh, it support Kirillic letters because it's one story about <laughs> getting LaTeX work, but Kirillics in the pre-UTF-8 world was a huge complicated topic and I had to write article in Russian for my university. And the third part of this manual was how you're supposed to uh, bypass licensing, licensing checks and use the software to edit LaTeX without paying for a license for it. Windows world, you know, 
And after reading this manual, actually after reading the first part of it, uh, I started to feel dizzy. And at that moment, I decided that, no, I don't want to live in this world. I want to switch to Linux. So the basic reasons why I switched to Linux were the two uh, things, the latte and Emacs Auctech, the plugin to Emacs, which allowed you to write LaTeX texts very easily. And yeah, you guess you guess it. Uh, it it may be, uh, it may sound strange for uh, regular users, but I switched to Linux because it was easier. It was like the most easiest tool to solve the task of writing an article. And of course, this Linux was Fedora Linux. And this is how my uh, path started, but uh, it, it was only the first step. The second step was um, I was using this uh, Linux system basically as a typewriter uh, <laughs> to write and nothing else. But then I, the question came, like, how do I connect to internet? And uh, at that moment, uh, connecting to internet was a hard task because uh, it was all about PPTP network connection. So you had to set up your system to connect to intermediate a host, which will uh, connect you to internet further. And there were some complications in the protocol. And one task was to connect. And the second task was to configure default network routes. So that request to external resource goes through the right node and is not lost on the local network. And you can imagine at that moment, I had no idea what network root is and especially what PPTP is like nothing. I, I didn't know anything except how to type a text in the text editor. So I came to our network administrators and asked for help. Uh, and the uh, person came uh, and like, he was very confident guy and like he entered the room and said like, who here needs help with network? And so, yes, please, this is my computer, please help me. He touched the button, screensaver was uh, closed and he saw Linux. <laughs> and at that moment, uh, the, he realized like he was a network administration, administrator, but Windows network administrator. He couldn't help me with Linux at all. So I switched to, uh, people, with, uh, uh, we had a local Linux community there as well. Uh, it was community of Gen2 users and they had a solution. So I asked them for help and they brought me a script with like, you know how Gen2 users solve problems. They write scripts of two, <laughs> 200 lines. <laughs> and uh, they said like, yeah, if you make this script running, uh, it will solve your problem. It will configure everything. And of course, this script didn't run on Fedora. And at that moment, I made my first engineering decision <laughs> because, uh, of course, when I say your script doesn't work on my system, I need this help for Fedora. They said, like, why don't you reinstall to Gentoo and like configure a script there? And uh, the <laughs> I said like, no, I'm not going to solve a problem by reinstalling the system to a different one. I'm going to solve a problem for Fedora on Fedora and in the Fedora way. So I don't want to just like copy your script and tweak it so it works. I want to make it work the way Fedora networking subsystem expect it to work. And I took the task and I spent next two weeks dual boot into Windows and back again, uh, trying to figure out how this whole thing works, uh, reading manuals, uh, boot into Linux, trying, failing, booting back to Windows, going to internet, reading again, and so on. So two weeks of uh, messing up with all these configuration files in Fedora, and I made it work. And this was my first ever achievement. Like I really, really made it work. It boosted my confidence uh, so much, uh, you cannot even uh, imagine. And uh, <laughs> what happened is that uh, I realized that even though it was a frustrating experience, like two weeks for to set up my network connection, it was actually very interesting work to do. Uh, yeah, it was hard, but it was, uh, 
possible. And then the uh, end result, when it finally worked, it was so amazing. And this gave me the idea that probably the engineering job is what I want to do, that I like this and I wanted to, to keep working with this. So when I started to think about my first job, even though I was student of mathematics and like had no previous experience, I said like, I want to go to IT. I want to go to engineering. And uh, I chose the first position as a junior support engineer. And I went to uh, the job interview. <laughs> I entered the, uh, it was my first job interview. I was absolutely crazy nervous. I knew nothing. I didn't know how to behave. I didn't know what to th what to say. I came to the job interview and I said, I want to be a junior support engineer. And then interview started and they started to ask me all those weird questions, you know, like what's DNS or, or what's the difference between TCP and UDP or how SMTP works. And what do you choose, like POP or IMAP free? All this kind of interesting stuff. And <laughs> by back then, I had no idea of any of those things. Like I, I saw the letters, but I really didn't, couldn't explain anything what's behind those letters. It's just the letters I saw on the internet. And you can imagine the interview didn't went well. It was like, yeah, I know nothing. I don't know. I don't know. And I don't know. And then uh, the guy who interviewed me, he said, why do you want to go for engineering position? Maybe uh, you can go better to the call center operator uh, position. You don't need any knowledge there. You just sit on the phone and uh, reply according to the playbook. And I said, no, 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 I want to be the engineer. I want the engineering thing. Of course, I don't know things right now. It's uh, like I'm total noob and, and I have no idea. But I said, and here Fedora comes. <laughs> I said, but uh, just last week, I configured PPTP connection on my Fedora core Linux. And the reaction of that guy was priceless. He like said, what? PPTP on Fedora Core Linux, you configured it, and I haven't done it yet still myself, he said. <laughs> and it changed the whole interview uh, sto uh, story. They uh, like said, okay, yes, you, you are engineer. <laughs> We're taking you, of course, you will need to learn stuff, but yes, uh, okay, this is how my IT career started. And next day I was a junior support engineer learning all of these things about DNS and SMTP and, and what, what for. So a year and a half later, I changed from junior support engineer to a lead support engineer in that company. And uh, yeah, I left it at that point because I decided still to pursue my PhD and not continue yet in, in the IT area. But it was, yeah, the first IT experience and based on Fedora. So yeah, Fedora helps you to pass the job interview. <laughs> okay. Uh, I'll make a pause here. I still have more stories, but if you want to ask something or uh, comment. Okay. Okay, this was just the beginning, right? <laughs> so what also happened with this PPTP Fedora stuff is while I was searching for a solution, I accidentally joined Fedora IRC channel, <laughs> Russian speaking Fedora IRC channel. We had a Fedora Russian uh, channel on IRC back then. And I tried to ask my questions there, but I didn't uh, ask the right questions and people were not able to help me really that much. But I started to hang out there. And then I noticed that there are conversations going and in some of those conversations, I can participate. Uh, not maybe as an expert who explains how to solve things, but as a person who says, oh yeah, I also have this problem. Or maybe as a person who says like, Oh, that's unfortunate you have such a bug. I heard something about it yesterday. And 
I started to hang out on this Fedora IRC for more and more and uh, like people started to ask questions and when we ask questions for the first time, uh, you, someone else replies them. But when uh, the second time the question comes, I'm able to answer that. And uh, yeah, this uh, this how it whole uh, whole thing started by hanging out, reading the log of the RC chat, and sometimes like jumping in and talking with people. So um, yeah, also maybe. <laughs> One thing to uh, which may be worth noting here is that there is a difference between local Fedora chat, uh, like localized Fedora chat, maybe Russian speaking Fedora chat, or, and the generic Fedora chat. Uh, the problem I have with uh, the official Fedora IRC channel is that there is no place for hanging out there. And uh, it's a it's not because like people didn't provide it, it's just because naturally it's so huge. So it is hard to uh, track conversations of 3000 people in, in one one cha channel. So they, we have to enforce more stricter rules on this channel for to make it effect productive. But I think that uh, it is important to have those smaller, lighter, uh, versions of uh, Fedora community channels for smaller groups uh, sometimes because yeah there you can be more flexible have more freedom and uh, like sometimes discuss off topic matters and no one will ban you from there so this is maybe one thing to to know like don't always try to merge every every channel into every other one but have having local smaller communities help and yeah, uh, the next part story which I, which I want to share is um, how I uh, chose my path as being an engineer. Because uh, in when you just start the engineering career, you have uh, not that many. Uh, knowledge about the range of engineering activities and engineering work which is available to you. There are, I think, there are four basic uh, roles which are well known right now and where, which are well known outside of engineering community. These roles are like uh, system administrator, quality assurance testing, a support engineer, and programmer. So there are like four cornerstones of the engineering career, right? And when you choose your path when you're and or even before junior, you try to choose between these four. And but this vision of the engineering world is actually very limiting. And uh it is not right vision. It's just a vision of an IT from a point of view of a Hollywood movie, but <laughs> Uh, in engineering, really, there is so much more of different activities, more or less engineering, depending on your preferences. And so for me, the understanding of this fact also came from Fedora, because um, like a couple years later after that uh, support uh, thing, I worked as system administrator in a small company. And I was the only system administrator there. I worked in like it was nice, but uh, the problem was that being an only uh, expert in the field while you're still uh, not really expert and just have have started only recently is a bad thing, right? You kind of sit and, and you do what you know, but no one is there to teach you. No one is there to say, no, you're doing it wrong please change, change it and so on. So I was uh, thinking that I need to build, to change something, I need to find a new opportunity and I, I need to like build my path forward. I don't want to stay a sysadmin of a small company forever. So I was, I started to think about like what I want to do uh, as an engineer, wh which direction I want to take. 
And I was looking like, no, I don't want to do programming. I don't want to do testing. What I want to do, really want to do, is I want to do what Fedora does. This is really was the answer for me because uh, at, by, by, that, uh, by then, I already knew how Fedora release process works, uh, how alpha, beta, and final release happens, how packages come into uh, repositories, how repositories come into ISO, and, and how, how it's a lot of work in making many moving pieces to work together, to actually be compatible, and to be delivered to final destination. And... This is the kind of work which is engineering, but it's a engineering with a wide range of tasks, each of them small, but a, a very wide reach. And it was very interesting for me to see this structure, to see these pipelines, to see the flow, how pieces of code from upstream go uh, into these packages, which go finally into your workstation. And, uh, I learned the word release engineering from Fedora, and I learned that there is activity which is called release engineering, which is about uh, building the thing out of these small pieces, and it's still engineering. It's not like management, it's, it's, it's a actual engineering task. And I tried to search for it as my new opportunity, and, and, and I looked for a job specifically with this term, and I didn't find any because this term is so, was so unfamiliar at that moment to the wider uh, corporate IT market. Uh, people didn't realize yet, back then that release engineering is a thing, is a separate thing which you need to do. It was in the pre-DevOps times, right? So uh, that, that's why I always like laugh a bit when, when I hear about DevOps, like new stuff, modern way of doing things. It's actually, we were doing DevOps um, in Linux distributions long before it, the name has appeared for the activity of connecting pieces between operations and developers and in, 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 uh, making them talk to each other. This is what we were doing as a Linux distribution. And so, uh, yeah, I didn't find the release engineering work. But because I was searching for this term, I actually find one specific position, which was called build engineer. And I said like, yeah, if I cannot get release engineer, at least I will try this thing. And this, uh, and I went there, I passed the interview. Uh, I uh, got the position of build engineer in a company where we were building Linux kernel bits and uh, for various platforms and I learned that there is actually an opportunity to be a built engineer, and it's also a thing. It's not just something which happens automatically when you develop an application. And uh, like if you develop a really big thing, then built engineer is a whole lot of knowledge on its own uh, about building those pieces all together. And this is where it started. This is where I entered this huge companies with uh, very interesting infrastructure problems in interesting workflows and which are much more complicated when usual like git commit uh, test built and done uh, thing which you think as a junior is exist there exists there yeah and uh, here Fedor wasn't explicitly there at my job interview but it is what triggered me to search for something else something new uh, something more fun Okay, <laughs> I can go on and on. So uh, more stories, uh, let me know if when I should stop and then uh, answer questions. Hi, yeah. I was just jumping in. Um, since you, you know, want it to be interactive, I'll jump in with a question now, but it was actually about the first story. You told. Okay, yeah. So when you were in the office, in the interview, I said to you, wouldn't you be more, wouldn't you be more suited to the call center? You know, you had the Fedora thing in your back pocket and some of our contributors might have that in their back pocket too. But um, I guess I'm going to ask, like, what did you call on to give you the confidence in that situation? You know, you're in this 
situation. And I think like I'm impressed by how you handled that. Um, and I don't think that everyone might have that innate confidence or innate ability or maybe you maybe you actually grew that yourself or maybe you had a mentor or your parents like where do you feel like you got the strength to stand up I, in that moment yeah i definitely had a very uh, support uh, very a lot of support in my family so for me uh programming was not something uh totally unfamiliar i i played the game of programming when, when i was in school with my parents when, when uh they actually created some list of uh, tasks you know how to draw things and you needed to write a simple program to draw a spiral or to, to draw boxes so i wasn't drawing this activity before that and and i wasn't like uh, uh i had the thought that i can do this uh supported with Fedora. But also I think what hap helped me a lot uh, then and then later is this mathematical background uh, because uh, I don't want to raise a Hollywood topic here, but uh, in IT area of uh, mathematics is considered to be a uh, like relevant discipline. Well, it can be argued, uh, but uh, it was run in my family, basically, the, the idea that if you can do mathematics, you can do everything. <laughs> so it's basically, I, I did uh, believe that nothing uh, can stop me really if I, if I really want to. It's just a matter of what, what I really want. And then I will find a way to, to get there because, yeah, I do math. And like, what else can, can, so can stop I, me? <laughs> I want to ask you something like very genuinely. And if I sound naive, please forgive me. I had a very close friend in high school who was from Russia. And her family also put a huge emphasis on mathematics. Um, they had her going to like a special mathematics school. And I remember her father was um, a programmer. And even though her mother was an artist, she had also been a scientific researcher um, and was doing like mathematics and science. So I was just curious, like, is that emphasis on mathematics something that's cultural? Um, yeah, I think in Russia, it uh, the, the culture, it's it sometimes gets weird even, but but it it really is if in school you have a uh, science class, uh, the arts class, and the rest class <laughs> and you always want to go to the first because the quality of the teachers of everything will be better in the first thing it's 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 something in in the culture in in russia that we don't trust that much a uh, human arts we we kind of uh, we have a well-developed technical uh, knowledge, but we don't uh, have a well uh, well established uh, humanities like as, as a field uh, as a, as an area of expertise. Yeah, so that's interesting. Definitely. Yeah. <laughs> um, I wanted to ask too. Oh, shoot, what was I going to ask? Do you feel like? Do you feel like that was? that interaction that you had with that person was solely based on your qualifications or do you feel as though it was also because of your gender? I think uh, gender was part of the surprise for that person, uh, but I, I don't think he really uh, focused on that mu uh, this that much. But again, I think I cheated a lot of gender related stereotypes with a mathematical background. So uh, I do believe like sometimes it's even like shouldn't be uh, happening like this. <laughs> but I, I know that uh, in uh, uh, like using my mathematical background, uh, I, I uh, can open more doors than uh, without it. Yeah. So, so it helped and, and it resets certain stereotypes. So People are already surprised by the mathematical backgrounds. We are easier to catch with, I can also surprise you in IT. <laughs> and you can also like, you also don't apply my stereotype in IT as well. So sometimes it yeah. helped. Uh, yeah, also not only on the junior level, it, it happened on the senior level. Some, one, once it was 
really very uh, explicit because I talked with a person from a different department about some technical implementation of the architecture of a solution which we want to do. And uh, I was, my opinion was completely discarded. And then in the evening we had informal conversation and I told that I have a PhD in geometry and topology. And next day, the guy was talking to me completely different. <laughs> you know, like he really started to listen. And, and yeah, so sometimes uh, this thing helps, but don't know how to suggest other people to... Um, well, I think maybe it's um, having a good understanding of your specific field and, you know, kind of bracing yourself or having that, hey, this moment could come. And when that moment comes, this is what I'm going to say, or these are the things I will call yeah, upon. Yeah, this is actually uh, the advice you can take from here is like, uh, find your uh, own personal wow effect, you know, like something which you can use to surprise people. It doesn't have to be relevant to the field you are you're targeting, right? It, it can be a totally different thing, but... Uh, you, if you have this but option and like, yeah, yeah, but I can do this thing, you can research a lot of these conversations into a different way and it, it, it can help. And I have my own open source actually does it <laughs> for you, right? I have my own story there too. Like, um, going to, going to Flux in the past, you know, just very recently in the F cake role. So I haven't been to Flock as the FK, just contributor. Um, and there's always new people that come come every year. So, you know, we're always meeting new people there. And I'll often have conversations with people who don't really know, like, my involvement or what, what I have to do. And sometimes I think that, um, and I've even been asked, like, oh, are you here with somebody? You know, like, am I the wife or partner? <laughs> <laughs> of somebody here and I'm like no I run fedora badges and I've designed almost all of them <laughs> and you know like and then they're like what and I'm like yeah I've run that project for like four years and I, I teach people on that and they're just like wow like you you do you do this thing so having that kind of in your your back pocket and ready to go and be like this is the thing I do and kick ass that and not being afraid to brag about it yeah yeah, use it. And and also, I think it's important to like work actively on your portfolio. This is, this is the kind of thing you need. And uh, this is where it, it happens sometimes where people like uh, say, you got the PhD like in mathematics, but you are not paid for it. So why? It's, it's like it's worthless. And I said like, no, uh, every side activity you do, uh, it 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 goes back to you and it helps in one way or the other, maybe not today, maybe like in 10 years, you will recognize that all these side projects which you've built, they actually pay back and, and they actually help you uh, go through certain stages. And it can be uh, like hobby project to create or uh, to draw, like the artist project, it can be hobby project as an engineering project, uh, but yeah, they can they can work two 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 years later. They still will work, and and yeah. you had a lot of fun doing them. <laughs> yeah, and that's it definitely with badges. Like, I still get to brag about that, you know, and I still am a part of that. So, I definitely don't spend as much time. But <clears throat> I have a question here from the chat. Yep. Uh, I totally can relate how the view into tech from outside is very narrow, and a lot of us do not know what prospects engineering holds. Can you let us know what helped you figure out what prospects would be available to newbies or how we can explore to know those opportunities? So one way which I described is uh, to, to learn about engineering and more different aspects of it is this uh, interaction with open source communities. For me, it helped a lot because like it opened the world for me for there is technical documentation work, there is uh, like uh, release engineering work, there is uh, uh, like testing work and all of these pieces come together in, in some, such a ways that you can learn this. So. 
so one thing is just this networking and uh, connect, connecting to certain projects and watching after uh, how other people do it. The second part, which works for me quite well uh, personally, is that I uh, chose it to target the large company uh, to, to start with, because uh, when you enter a large company, you can enter it at one position, but you will uh, learn a lot about the interactions inside the company. You will learn about other people and their different roles, and you get the exposure to like a whole uh, huge world of different tasks and, and, and areas. So what works for me is like, I entered as a junior support engineer, I entered the, uh, I started to work in the largest Russian hosting provider. And they, they had a huge data center, they had a support team, uh, admin team, uh, there was a development team and I started to watch after how the teams interact. Like I was sitting next to the data center engineer and I was watching how we carry servers here from, from, from here to there. I was like interacting with everyone. So I guess uh, don't try to win at the first moment, try to reach there and then figure your path uh, from inside. It, it may work, it may help. And this, the other part of this advice is like, if it doesn't work, don't don't uh, stay there for too long, right? So uh, you can go to the position which you uh, don't really like to start you to like get the experience, but if you stay in that position you don't like for too long, this means it doesn't work. You, you need to, to do something about it actively. Don't keep it uh, those, just because it happens. Those jobs can be so draining. Yeah, yeah. So yeah, I have another I, question for you. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Okay. Uh, your blog series, Quantum Integration, has been a very useful learning resource and reference for me. Any plans to continue that blog? Oh, I found the reader for my blog. That's, that's, <laughs> thank you so much. <laughs> so uh, you see, uh, probably uh, that. Um, so there's a thing about the articles you write, right? I usually write articles out of frustration. <laughs> this is <laughs> what happens and, and drives you is like, uh, you try to do something, it doesn't work exactly like you wanted. And then you write an article how it should work for real and how you think it all comes together properly. So you can see that uh, the year 2017, <laughs> when I wrote most of that articles, <laughs> wasn't f particularly fulfilling to me because it was before I joined Red Hat. <laughs> so uh, I do want to keep writing. I'm trying. Uh, I'm actually in preparation for the article for opensource.com now. But yeah, so the reason why you don't see new updates on that thing is because I have now more channels to communicate my positions and it yeah, I, less frustration, maybe. <laughs> so I, I have, I have Fedora you. Devel and, and Rel Devel for it. Yeah, go on, Mary. Um, was being on the Fedora Council what you expected it to be? Uh, not really. I think it it works for both FESCO and Fedora Council. Because again, like if you're an outsider uh, from from a far away, you think of FESCO is like uh, people who who decide things in Fedora and Council, like people who make things work in Fedora. But when you enter both of these groups and you realize how small actually the, the reach of those groups is and how much Fedora community is just the community and, and that FESCO and Council uh, people on FESCO and Council can try, they, they do amazing work and they navigate as much as they can, but they cannot replace the community. And if you want things done, you actually need to go and do them rather than <laughs> get to Council and, and, and try to force someone because you cannot force anyone from, from the Council or from FESCO. You can only work with what community brings to you. And if community brings to you the idea, fine if it doesn't then you need to make it and uh yeah this was a re change change in mind for me for right. both of these groups right because when i felt the same exact way when i saw council from the outside you know a couple of years ago or whatever i was like oh 
you know, big important group of people that make decisions and we all have to go along with it kind of stuff. But, you know, being on the council, it's a lot more consultation, trying to resolve and make things uh, work smoother in whatever area of uh, the project that might, <laughs> exactly. Matthew Miller says we can't actually do anything without people to do it. Indeed. And that, that's definitely um, a good point. But I guess the reason that I wanted to ask you that question is because I think historically, and when I joined even, uh, we've had low participation from women. And I, I'm, I don't know, or not, if there's been anyone who's non-binary, um, we've had low participation from women on the council. I was so excited when you um, ran and, and got a position on there just because I'm there and I'm like, yes, another lady to talk to. Um, but I guess I wanted to just point that out because like, I think more women could have that opportunity. It's a chance to I think, consult yeah. and, and be a part of a decision-making process. It's, a lot less scary or intimidating than it sounds. Yeah, I, I remember when, when I first uh, came to some Fedora event, uh, it was a Linux tag in Berlin and there was Fedora booth. And I came to Fedora booth and there was this, uh, Christoph Wickert was there. And I was like, oh, I'm staying next to a person who is on uh, the council or, or ward or FESCO. So, so somewhere like, oh, how cool is that? And then I, I realized like, oh no, you know, it's 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 actually everyone can from community can come and be that person. You don't need to wait 10 years to get there. You just need to come and take it. It's it's all there for you. So it's actually amazing how many opportunities you have in uh, open source communities if you just try that. The, the most hardest uh, issue is to talk yourself into trying uh, into trying yes. yeah, like, like yes you should just go and try it that was actually an interesting point when i was organizing those uh, events in uh, russian speaking community i learned how easy it is to get something for free because we were sitting there in the community and was like yeah we need a build server for some of the russian fedora remix stuff where do we get it do we pay for it and like i said okay Wait a second. I will just write a mail to a hosting provider and ask if they want to donate the server for us. So I, I just wrote an email to people all over there and said, like, you know, we are just a Linux community. We want to build server. Can you give it to us? And they said, of course, please take it. And, and it was just, yes, do take it. And, and you don't need to do anything complex about it. You just need to ask and you get, you're given. And There's the same so happened with many e places event you can space. Get just by asking. Yeah, yeah. With a conference also, we were looking for a venue for a conference and we were like, oh, yeah, where do we get the sponsorship and the budget to organize the conference? And we said, okay, let's try to write a mail to this uh, nearest IT uh, business around and just ask them if we can provide the venue. Next day, they answered, yes, of course, please come and, and, and organize them. So, yeah, it's all about just starting and just showing the initiative, and then it works from there. Yeah. All right. So we're running short on time. I'm going to say this is the longest session so far, and I feel like it could go longer. So I'd love yeah, to hear love <laughs> more from you at some point. Um, we are putting together this little piece of content after the events. And I don't know if you saw the Budapest video that we made, but it's similar to that. So the first part, the hi, my name is blah, blah, blah. That should be in your native language. And then the second part, we are from different countries. We speak to that part in English. And then at the, at the end, we are Fedora. So does, did that make sense? Yes, it makes sense, though I <laughs> I now need to focus on the text. Okay, <laughs> I'll try. <laughs> okay, um, switching to Russian is hard after hour of talking English. Let, um, resetting. Меня зовут Александра Федорова. Я из России. 
женщина, и я разговариваю по-русски. Мы из разных стран, мы говорим разных языков, и мы из разных культур. Но Федора объединяет нас с open source. Мы – Федора. I love that. Thank you. That was great. Um, I'm going to jump off. I need a break before the next session. Um, if there's any more questions, you can, uh, people want to jump on the screen, they can actually request and then you can moderate and let them up. So I'm going to hop out for now. Thanks again for coming. Thank I you. really enjoyed everything you had to say. I, I just will add a last note uh, for the audience in the room. Uh, if you want to talk more about your experience, if you want tips from me about how to drive through engineering, how to fight with some not so friendly corporate environments, let me know. I was an outreach member before, but I realized it takes too much of my time. So I cannot be the official outreach member, but I do want to help anyone who needs the help. So feel free to reach out to have an informal conversation. I will be glad to help in any way I could. Can you drop your handle in the channel? Okay. Or in the chat, yeah. Sure. So they can, people can find you. <laughs> It's book war for everyone else on the <laughs> video. All right, bye. Yep. Thank you. And bye, everyone.